The pagan Roman emperors tried to obliterate the holy places where our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and rose from the dead, so that they would be forgotten. Emperor Hadrian, 117 to 138, ordered that Golgotha and the Lord's sepulcher be buried, and that a temple in honor of the pagan goddess, Venus and a statue of Jupiter be placed there. Pagans gathered at this place and offered sacrifice to idols. Eventually after 300 years, by divine providence, the Christian holy places, the sepulcher of the Lord, and the life-giving cross, were discovered and opened for veneration. This took place under Emperor Constantine the Great, 306-337, after his victory over Maxentius, in 312, who ruled the western part of the Roman Empire, and over Licinius, the ruler of its eastern part. In the year 323 Constantine became the sole ruler of the vast Roman Empire. In 313 Saint Constantine issued the Edict of Milan, by which Christianity was legalized and persecutions against Christians in the western half of the empire were stopped. Although Licinius had signed the Edict of Milan in order to oblige Constantine, he continued his cruel persecutions against Christians. Only after his conclusive defeat did the Edict of Milan extend also to the eastern part of the empire. The holy equal of the Apostles Emperor Constantine, triumphing over his enemies in three wars, with God's assistance, had seen the sign of the cross in the heavens. Written beneath were the words, By this you shall conquer. Ardently desiring to find the cross upon which our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, Saint Constantine sent his mother, the pious Empress Helen, May 21st, to Jerusalem, providing her with a letter to Saint Macarios, the Patriarch of Jerusalem. Saint Helen journeyed to the holy places connected with the earthly life of the Savior, building more than 80 churches. At Bethlehem the birthplace of Christ, and on the Mount of Olives where the Lord ascended to heaven, and at Gethsemane where the Savior prayed before his sufferings and where the Mother of God was buried after her dormition. Although the Holy Empress Helen was no longer young, she set about completing the task with enthusiasm. In her search for the life-giving cross, she questioned both Christians and Jews, but for a long time her search remained unsuccessful. Finally, she was directed to a certain elderly Jew named Jude who stated that the cross was buried beneath the Temple of Venus. They demolished the pagan temple and, after praying, they began to excavate the ground. Soon the Lord's tomb was uncovered. Not far from it were three crosses, and a board with the inscription ordered by Pilate, and four nails which had pierced the Lord's body, March 6. In order to discover on which of the three crosses the Savior had been crucified, Patriarch Makarios alternately touched the crosses to a corpse. When the cross of the Lord touched the dead man, he was restored to life. After witnessing the raising of the dead man, everyone was convinced that the life-giving cross had been found. Christians came in a huge crowds to venerate the Holy Cross, beseeching Saint Makarios to lift the cross, so that those far off could see it. Then the Patriarch and other spiritual leaders lifted the Holy Cross, and the people prostrated themselves before the Honorable Wood, saying, Lord have mercy. This solemn event occurred in the year 326. During the discovery of the life-giving cross another miracle took place. A woman who was close to death was healed by the shadow of the Holy Cross. The elderly Jude, October 28, and other Jews believed in Christ and were baptized. Jude was given the name Kyriakos, and later he was consecrated as the Bishop of Jerusalem. He suffered a martyr's death for Christ during the reign of Emperor Julian the Apostate, 361-363. Saint Helen took part of the life giving wood and nails with her to Constantinople. Saint Constantine ordered a majestic and spacious church to build at Jerusalem in honor of the resurrection of Christ, also including under its roof the life-giving tomb of the Lord and Golgotha. The church was built in ten years. Saint Helen did not survive until the dedication of the church, she reposed in the year 327.
The church was consecrated on September 13, 335. On the following day, September 14, the festal celebration of the exaltation of the honorable and life-giving cross was established. Another event connected to the cross of the Lord is remembered also on this day. Its return to Jerusalem from 